Hello, keyboard friends. I'm Simon, and this is my guide on how to loop tactile MX DAL switches. Uh, we'll start right off the bat with a little bit of information you need to know beforehand. Uh, first things first, don't go out and willy-nilly start trying to loop every tactile switch you own. Uh, tactile switch lubing is generally not recommended, though it can be done if you know what you're doing. Now, there are three categories of parts when it comes to looping a tactile switch. You've got category one, which is things you should loop, and that is the spring. Category two is things you can loop, that being the rails on the stem, as well as the switch bottom, as well as the hole and the area around the stem hole. And then the final portion being things you should never lube and what you should never lube is the stem feet as well as the leaf on the housing bottom. What we're going to start with is first of all going through the suggested tools that you should have. Uh, one being a switch opener. You don't need a big fancy one like this. Uh, the uh, straight metal one that's nice and cheap on Amazon works just fine. Uh, two is lube. Now in terms of lube, there are a lot of lube choices that you can use when making a tactile switch or lubing a tactile switch. Now traditionally for the spring, uh, you can either go with a light oil or a slightly thicker grease. I personally prefer the grease, although oil is just fine. Sometimes I'll use oil. It's completely up to preference. If you don't know what to use, just use 204 grade zero or 205 grade zero, whatever you can get your hands on. Uh, if you are a little bit more picky, you want to pick up some limited slip differential oil, LSD oil, and that does wonders for decent springs. Uh, as for the lube to be used in the actual switch, the thickest lube I would ever recommend is 204 grade zero. Now 204 grade zero is decently thick, but that's as thick as I would realistically go. Uh, you could uh, opt for something of the 1 series, that being 103, 104, 106, 107, or possibly a uh, grade double zero of uh, either 204 or 205. Uh, 203 grade zero would also be fine. Anyway, anything thinner than 204 grade zero or equal to 204 grade zero, you'll do just fine with it. Uh, if, you guys, uh, if you guys want a video in the future where I break down loop nomenclature and what's what and what's thick and what's thin and what to use where, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll go ahead and make a nice uh, loop video. Uh, the third and final thing we're going to need, and most importantly, is lube applicators. Now these can be bought on Amazon. I'll stick a link in the description. You get a pack of like a few hundred of, the, uh, of these for rather cheap. Uh, these are very nice to use because they, one, let you get in to the uh, stem bottom rails very easily and also have the added benefit of allowing you to remove lube, uh, whereas uh, paint brushes are very difficult. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll make a MX clear since ergo clears are quite common and quite popular. This stock stem. There we go. Now as covered before, things we do want to lube is the spring. And uh, I've already got some looped springs that I've looped in this jar with a uh, lovely mix of LSD oil as well as uh, some Crytox. Let's grab our 204 and grab a decent amount with our applicator. I'll show you what a decent amount is. That should be more than enough realistically for uh, for what we're trying to do. Now I'm going to go and do the lazy loop method. So we're not even going to touch the uh, the stem. 
we're going to simply touch the housing. Now, I strongly suggest that you start learning on a black housing. A black housing allows you to see if you have overlooped, and overlooping can be very problematic, especially with tactile switches. Now, for this one here, we're just going to do a light dab on each rail, just like that. And if we look at it, we can visibly see a tiny bit of lube, but that's okay. And what we'll do is lightly touch the tip of the hole without inserting the applicator fully, and then go once around, being very careful to not touch the leaf. Uh, if for whatever reason you do touch the leaf, uh, just go ahead and toss the switch out. Uh, don't even bother trying to fix it. So we've just lubed the stem bottoms here, and that should be more than enough. Let's go ahead and grab a spring. Here we are. And throw on our clear stem. Now it is entirely possible to lube the stem rails instead of the housing rails. Though they get slippery and you know they might slide out of your hand uh, since you do have to put them back in the switch. Uh, you might have a nice lube station that will hold it for you, but no nice lube station will help the stem be inserted back into the housing. And I personally don't like the feeling of crytox all over my fingers, so I do the lazy lube method. So just like when lubing linear switches, we don't touch the top housing at all. We only lube the bottom housing and the spring. And the difference between the tactile lubing uh, situation and the linear is that we do not touch the leaf ever. Now this is nice, quite tactile, not bad at all. Now you want to be very careful as to not over lube. You should put the minimum amount of lube. If you see lube, you've probably lubed too much unless you really know what you're doing. Now we've made a nice ergo clear right here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and lube a tactile zeal silent. We're going to follow the same methodology here. I'm going to put the stem aside and just grab a little bit of a little bit of uh, 204G0. See, this is too much, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off. There we go. That's much more manageable. This is a tiny bit less than we would be using for, uh, for linear switches, since we're not going to be touching the leaf at all. Now, with a clear housing, you want to be way more careful. I highly suggest you try this out on a lot of black housings first. Practice is very, very important. Here we go. We can see a tiny bit of lube, just barely occluding the translucency of the switch. And we'll do the same on the other side. Here we are. We should see no visible globs or accumulation anywhere. At this point, we can just go ahead and toss the spring in. And then put the stem back in. I like to press it a few times before I close it up, just in case I notice something is off about the feel. That means I can resolve it right then and there, or I can scrap the switch without having to fully assemble it. And here we are. We've got a nicely lubed tactile silent switch. And honestly, this feels quite good. This uh, feels a lot smoother than my Ergo Clear. But Ergo Clears are picky with what housings you put the, uh, the clear stem into. And they're also quite picky about the quality of the stem itself. But this here feels lovely. And that's it. Easy peasy. Here's some quick tips about things that I've learned through many years of switch modding and switch lubing. Uh, tip number one. In general, do not lube tactile switches. If you feel uncomfortable, unsure, unfamiliar, uh, more often than not, you will actually ruin the tactile experience of the switch if you've lubed it incorrectly. Which brings us into tip number two, practice. Practice with black housings.
Start with black housings, tactile switches, and don't just don't just try one. Try a few. So uh, go through four or five switches. Make sure they all feel consistent in terms of their smoothness. Make sure that none of them have reduced tactility. And then point three is test your particular tactile switch to see if it actually behaves better looped. It's entirely possible, even if looped completely correctly, that lubing a particular switch will remove some of the tactile feel. Now, over lubing or incorrectly lubing will 100% reduce the tactile feel. So in general, test it out. Grab a few switches, try it out, make sure it feels good. And then we'll say our final tip four is experiment which is kind of the same thing as three. Experiment. Try different lubes, uh, try different methodology, but in general, just follow the basic rules of things that should be lubed, can be lubed, and don't lube this. And that's it. That's basically it for my lube guide. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. If you like the video, give me, give me a thumb. If you hate the video, give me the other thumb. And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hmm, cry talks.